So Lorenzo Senatore, thank you so much for joining our cinematography panel to talk about this really exciting new movie uh, uh, that Rod Laurie has directed called The Outpost. It's such a compelling story, this uh, true story uh, set in the uh, Afghanistan war. I was so surprised to read that your leading man, Scott Eastwood, broke his ankle just before filming began. So what did that do to all your planning, to your schedule that you'd probably spent months laying out? Yeah, um, yeah. The, first of all, thank you. Thank you for having me here. It's a pleasure to meet you all. And um, yes, that was uh, was quite um, was quite a shock. Where uh, I think about uh, three weeks uh, um, from shooting, and so we we uh, we had to shut down for an extra. I think we had to shut down for three weeks and then resume uh, the other three weeks of prep so that he can recoup. Uh, and so we, we also had to shift the schedule around to uh, to um, obviously uh, not have him shoot first, which uh, was original schedule that way. Because I mean he's the lead, so he's in, he was in like seventy percent of the movie. So that was that was a big reschedule. Um, but what it gives to us actually give us the chance to have some extra prep that we needed. Uh, so uh, at the end, everything worked out for the best. One of the extra pressures on working on a war movie is that the director, Rod Lurie, is a military man, right? He's a veteran himself. Um, what was that collaboration like in terms of just you coming up with the, the planning, say, for instance, for the battle? Right. Um, it, it, was, it was really good because uh, Everything he planned, he knew what he was talking about. So we didn't have to. We didn't really had to. We had a lot of uh, military advisor on set, but at the end, he was making the final decision because he was competent enough anyway. And so he, he had the right balance. Being a, being a filmmaker, but also have military experience, he had the balance to choose. You know, sometimes if you follow too much the advice, the advice of the advisor, the military advisor, you end up getting something that is not. Or for, for the way you the story, but with the fact that he had um, knowledge in both fields, uh, he he was the, the the guy with the final decision that that gave us um, uh, a tremendous advantage, I think, and 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 he was um, he was um, able to to get uh, to get the final result that he wanted. And there's the the Battle of Kamdesh. I mean, that's kind of the core of the film. It's more than a third of the film's running time. How many days was filming was that? The battle itself. The battle itself was, uh, I think, two weeks of our schedule. Um, because uh, although although it's a long running time, it was uh, mostly um, um, it was mostly done by runners, by the very long shots. So we were able we were able to cover a lot of uh, ground by by doing just a couple of shots a day. Sometimes we were we were we were coming in early in the morning. We would rehearse the shop. There was uh, maybe one or two minutes action sequence, very long, and uh, we would rehearse for two three hours. Then we would shoot it like two three times because we didn't have uh, any way the time to reset it too many times. So so we would do that in the first half of the day, and then the second half of the day we would do another shot. So we end up in one day getting like three or four minutes of action covered, and that was our day, and we would go back home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we always finish early. That this is incredible with Rod. We always finish early. We had short days also. We were shooting in the in the in the autumn. We had short days, but we always finish ahead of schedule. So the light was always matching. This was fantastic for me. Oh, that's incredible. And I know in terms of the frame, like you used a wider frame, right, for the uh, when you were shooting this. Yeah, we we used um, a, a pretty classical aspect ratio, which which was 185. We didn't want to go widescreen. We want to keep it uh, uh, more um, like documentary style. So we went with the uh, kind of a, um, a normal aspect ratio. But we used uh, a lot of wide lenses. Um, we we like the f I in general like either very wide or very long lenses. I I try always to stay away from the middle ground. In this case, we felt very much for the wide and close, which was obviously inspired by 
great movies like The Revenant or 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 um, stuff like that. But we we really felt that it worked for um, this type of action that we want to get, which was really close and personal. We wanted we wanted to put the audience right on their shoulders, on the on the soldiers' shoulders, and, and right in there in the field. Well, and speaking of soldiers, um, I understand that some of the real life soldiers came to visit the set. I mean, what was it like on those days? I mean, there must have just been this added pressure to get it right. You know, when these men that took part in the battle are actually watching the filming. For sure, for sure. And also was um, was the, we had some really haunting moments. Obviously these this guys, a few of them, I mean, the, the main guys, uh, Ty Carter, which was played by uh, Caleb uh, uh, Landry Jones, um, he came on set and when he came was really, it was a very, very emotional uh, process for the whole crew, really. Well, and it's, it's an extraordinary achievement for you. And I know we were talking, you've started a l while ago and you started it as a camera operator. When, uh, what do you look for when you're hiring camera operators like for The Outpost? What kind of, uh, what do you want from them having done it yourself? Well, on the outpost, I, I knew the camera was going to be really, really intense. And, and, that, and, and, um, and especially also uh, what I wanted is a lot of long shots that were going in and out. I, I, I really wanted to concentrate on trying to balance those interior exteriors and, mm -hmm. and, uh, and dedicate, uh, uh, dedicate more uh, on the lighting. So I hired. An operator was a long selection, and I find this incredible guy from Canada called Sasha Proctor, who was incredible. Um, he uh, helped me design this really uh, compact camera um, uh, with uh, with all the accessories built in the backpack, and we we took down a mini, an Alexa mini, down to um, almost two kilograms, which is nothing. And uh, he, so he was able to to run and 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 get. To the same speed of of soldier running, which uh, which uh, you know under fire they're running really fast. So uh, it was it was really an incredible collaboration. Uh, we we uh, bond immediately, and in fact he uh, he he's done everything I've done after the outpost. He's with me. So <laughs> and right before the outpost, you'd made Hellboy, this sort of oversized right. fantasy film. So, what is it? Do you do you bring a different approach when you to each genre, like from Hellboy to The Outpost? Well, my my approach in general is is it's like start from scratch, no matter what. I mean, I I I like to I like to start with a blank page and try to um, uh, treat every project as if I'm doing as if it's my first movie and. Uh, with the same enthusiasm as if it's my first student uh, film that I did, you know. So uh, it, it's really easy for me. The the one thing I'm trying to do is I try to erase everything I've done before from my head because I I have a, a personal hate from my from my own work, and I try to bring with me only the ex the good experience that I had as a camera operator working with some great DPs, including Se Shelley Johnson, who's with us today. Well, it certainly, I mean. In the outpost, I mean, I think it's one of it's being hailed as one of the sort of most realistic war films of the modern era by people that fought in that war. So I think that you and Rod Lurie really achieved what you were hoping to. Uh, well, listen, thank you for taking the time to talk to us, and we'll all get together on the panel with Shelley. And uh, in thank just you. A <laughs>